Hi guys, I am so, so sorry for all of the nonsense that is going on. Let me fix the camera and open up The Sims. <laughs> Please let this work. Let's see, let's see. Okay, we are finally getting active. So I did a stream in the beginning, like four o'clock, like an hour ago. And I don't know what I did to make the powers at B be so angry at me that things were not working but i finally figured it out <laughs> my computer just needed an aggressive reset and boom here we are so i am just going to be doing a random create a sim type video and just chit chatting uh let's see let's see let's see my friends they asked me specifically to talk about some topics since I was on live. So let me see. Okay, okay, okay. So my friend really wanted me to talk about this whole thing that's happening with Euphoria. And so yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So if you guys don't know, how my channel got a lot of internet clout in the beginning was that I was talking about Euphoria and all the issues with Euphoria. And this was at the beginning where Euphoria used to be good. I know, shocking, right? But back in the ye olden days when Euphoria came out, Euphoria was extremely good. Then Sam Levingston came out with Euphoria Season 2. And this is when we started to see that all that talent, yeah, that was from Sam Levingston being a notorious thief and stealing from women. My friend Hariana Hook has talked about this a lot on her channel. But damn, that man loves to steal. That man loves to steal. And due to his ego, he refuses to let people into his writing room. And that has just caused Euphoria Season 2 specifically to overall be such a mess. Somehow they were able to bag Zendaya from wherever Zendaya was hiding from in order to get her to be a part of Euphoria Season 3. But goodness gracious, I'm telling y'all now that I, I just want them to keep it. So many people who have been involved with Euphoria Season 2 are no longer with us. And I feel like in order to respect them, the show should no longer be in existence. I really feel like to be respectful, 
they should just cancel the show. But this is HBO we're talking about. These people love money so much. These people love money so much that there's no way they're going to end up canceling Euphoria Season 3. And I just know that Sam Levingston is not going to create a good cohesive season. It's just going to be a mess. Like, we don't understand what's happened to Rue and the money. Y'all remember when Rue took that money and the drugs and then used the drugs and literally nothing happened to her and nothing was hinted was going to happen to her at the end of season two? Or the fact that McKay, the black guy that was Cassie's OG boyfriend, he the fact that he disappeared off the planet, that's extremely concerning to me. I have no hope that the showrunners are going to give us a cohesive series. And so I really feel like they should keep it, but are they? You y'all know. <laughs> the answer is no, y'all. The answer is no, y'all. They are going to give us Euphoria season three. I personally don't have the bandwidth to watch it. I'm hoping that Kenny J D can watch it and tell us <laughs> and tell us what's going on. But I will not be tuned in. I will not be locked in, especially with the disappointment that was Euphoria Season 2. Like, it got to a point where me and my friends, right, I would travel to their apartment to watch Euphoria Season 2 with them. And we literally were so disappointed at the season finale that we decided to watch a K-drama. And that K-drama was more entertaining, more well-written. It was just better than Euphoria Season 2. And if it keeps going down the trajectory that it is, I don't have any hopes of... I don't have any hopes, y'all. There's only so much Zendaya can do to save us. There's only so much Zendaya can do. So another topic my friend wanted me to talk about is Bridgerton. If y'all don't know, I am a major Bridgerton girly. Specifically, I am a fan of Queen Charlotte, the, the Queen Charlotte love story. But what I want to talk about is the newest hints of the newest season. And when I tell y'all I am not excited, I am not excited. I try so hard to like Penelope Featherington, but she is just not a character that I can see myself liking. Like, I just made a TikTok before I got on this live where I was talking about how Characters whose whole entire plot point is how undesirable they are because they are bigger is just going to be a no for me. And I'm hoping they subvert my expectations, but that was Penelope's whole entire character for season one and two and how Colin ignored the heck out of her due to the fact that she was bigger. I, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to redeem themselves. Hey, Jay. Hi. I don't know how they're going to be able to redeem themselves and make Penelope and Colin a good couple after we watch them in season one and season two practically be that icky dynamic of the chubbier girl who's consistently ignored by her childhood crush. They have to do one of those divine miracles that they be talking about in order for me to be on their side because I don't want to see it. I honestly don't want to see it. All of my friends are super excited for it. Like, I have a friend who actually read the Bridgerton books, and she was like, yeah, it, it's, it's supposedly a lot going to happen. Like, a lot of good, spicy things are going to happen between Penelope and Colin. But I would have to see it to believe it, because the way that man was treating her, like, I have such a major ick for men, specifically in romance, books, movies, and media, who do their love interests so dirty and we're supposed to be rooting for them to be together. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just a major, major ick for me. I don't know. Y'all will have to tell me what y'all think. Y'all will have to tell me what y'all think for real. Let's see. So my friend wanted me to also talk about the... I guess the future of my channel. <laughs> um, I keep saying this and hopefully I am still on track, but I graduate literally next month. Uh, my graduation date is May 14th, but because of the school I'm at, they don't really want us to be great. 
So most people in nursing school in my area are chilling. Like I've seen so many people in other nursing schools in my area literally go on vacations, right? But my school, we're, they're still making us do tests. They're still making us do gigantic projects. Like we're literally in the sunken place right now. And that is why I haven't been posting a lot of videos. I have so many good juicy video ideas that I wanted to give y'all in 2024 that I'm still planning on giving y'all. Trust. Trust. I still am. But I can't really focus on doing that because my school is the ops. I really wanted to do like a major deep dive on AO3 fandom culture as it relates to fanfic because everybody knows that the one thing that keeps fandoms of all different shapes and forms together is fanfic. Fanfic is the great equalizer that lets us all imagine a what if scenario. But there is not a lot of inclusion in fanfic even though you would think even though you would think that fanfic would be inclusive, especially on AO3, the fact that there is not a ex-black reader fanfic tag, even though it's 2024, is extremely wild to me. Because, especially for like fandoms like, let's say, Wakanda Forever, you would think that there would be a specifically ex-black reader tag, but no, like, throughout the entire AO3 website, there is nothing like that. Uh, be don't be afraid to ask questions and stuff in the the chat box but yeah i've been wanting to do a video on that so much i also want to do a video about the rise and fall of the asmr boyfriend because if you guys were on the internet during 2020 like when we were all forced inside our houses y'all know exactly what i'm talking about with people like yagami yoto and I think it was, like, Carl's audio. Like, where are they now? Because they used to be a pinnacle of online TikTok. The online TikTok era. And we literally don't know where they went. Oh, what is that noise? <laughs> okay. I have no idea what that noise was. But, um, hey, uh, Jay and... Thank you for subscribing. I did not know that that's the noise it made when someone subscribed. That really scared me. But yeah, I really want to do a video diving deep into that. Because I feel like that's a topic that no one talks about. Oh, look, that is so cute. The little icon that comes on the screen when someone subscribes. Thank you, JN, for subscribing. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying the live. But yeah, I want to do more video essays on like, fandom stuff that no one really talks about because i feel like that's the videos people want to see like i feel like there are a thousand and fifty four videos on tiktok and the spicy novel trend but i low-key want to do a video talking about um omegaverse i don't know if y'all know what the um omegaverse is but that's something i've been wanting to do a deep dive for for forever because I want to know where the whole idea of the Omegaverse came from because every time I think about it, I'm like, this is the wildest thing my brain could ever possibly think of. So the Omegaverse is practically, <laughs> I don't know how to simplify this, but it's practically like, like, you know how we have like, so um, gender is fluid, but the main three genders are like intersex, male and female. In the Omegaverse, the theory proposes that like, there are those main genders, but there's also alpha, omegas, and betas. And in the Omegaverse, like, lit like literally is such a mess. Because there's... I, I don't know how to say this without YouTube giving me the bombastic side eye. But in the Omegaverse, men are able to get pregnant. And the Omegaverse is so widely expansive that people have even made, like diagrams on how men could get pregnant and all that and i just want to figure out who was the person who was brave enough to make this a concept because this is not something you just think of on a random saturday guys like if i could show you the diagrams i won't because i i don't want youtube to put me in demonetization jail but the omegaverse is literally something that is just like, wow, 
This is human ingenuity at its finest. Something that I've been thinking about recently is that if you guys had watched the anime known as Jujutsu Kaisen, <laughs> the author Gege said that whenever... I'm sorry guys, I don't even know how to say this. Whenever Ghetto swallows a curse, it's practically him getting pregnant with... <laughs> Getting pregnant with the curse, and I just have to look at Gege like, yo, bro, what is going on? Like, I really wish that Gege could do an interview because I really want to find out what their thought process is that they're doing stuff like this. Like, it was back to back to back nonsense. It was Gojo getting exposed for being racist, it was us finding out that Ghetto, whenever he eats the curses, <laughs> can literally get pregnant. And I don't even want to talk about what's going on in My Hero, but goodness gracious, it's so much. It's so much. Um, The fandom right now is in shambles. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anybody. But if you are on the side of TikTok that I am and you have seen the spoilers... Man, Gege, you shall do time. You shall do time. So right now, I'm for those who are joining in, I'm just making a random sim. I'm trying to break the face, the same face syndrome that I have for my sims by using presets. And I do have to say that this sim has a very unique face. None of my sims have this face. Jay can attest to this. Um, Jay follows me on my sims channel. But all of these sims, I kind of have the same face syndrome. So I'm trying my best to give this sim of mine very unique face structure. I don't even know what I'm saying. Let me know if there's anything you guys want me to talk about specifically. In fact, let me see if I can do something about the music. Let me know if that is too much for y'all. But y'all deserve to have a little background something something going on but yeah let's see my friend wanted me to talk about the quiet on set drama as well i don't even want to call that drama because it's not drama it's literally crimes but my thoughts and prayers goes out to everybody that was a victim of dan schneider and nickelodeon i don't know if you guys have been keeping up with this whole situation but Nickelodeon will never, never, never have a renaissance. I saw Bella Town on TikTok talking about all of the NSFW art that the creators of like Rugrats and SpongeBob had on the walls of their studio to the point where when it was time for little children to come visit them at the Nickelodeon studio, they will literally have to take the children to other departments because of how much NSFW work that they had on their walls. And I just find that extremely disgusting, especially putting that into context with all of the stuff that Dan Schneider was doing to them kids. Like, there is a air of very, there's a perversity going on at Nickelodeon. And I'm just thinking about all those poor, poor kids. And it was the girl from the Thundermans. Personally, I, I, I wasn't into Nickelodeon at that time. Like, they, they were not putting out bangers. So I personally stopped tapping into Nickelodeon at that time. But the girl who played the younger daughter on the Thundermans even came out and was like, Yeah, my time there was awful. And I just find that to be so infuriating because... You would think that they would do better with the age of social media. <laughs> you think they would do better, but no. And yes, Jay, I don't want to spoil it for those who haven't seen what's going on currently in the My Hero fandom. But goodness gracious, all I have to say is that we need to do a prayer vigil for Deku. I haven't caught up with My Hero in literally so long. But I saw the latest panel and I was like, I want y'all to take all of the suffering that Yuji Itadori and Deku have and put it on Sukuna. Put it on Sukuna, I promise. I promise they don't deserve this. But you know who does deserve this? Sukuna. Sukuna 
a hundred percent deserve this so do you guys have any critiques on the sim like anything y'all would like to see i'm totally down for customizing this sim based off y'all's preferences and yeah jay it really is so sad what's going on with nickelodeon what's making me even give the situation more of a side eye is that i don't think it's just nickelodeon i think that it's also disney but disney is a way bigger brand than nickelodeon will ever be so i don't think we'll ever get like a quiet on set version of that for nickelodeon i'm sorry for disney i feel like if people try to do a quiet on set disney version the evil mouse will literally have them taken out asap like guys disney does not play when it comes to its reputation like but i, I sense a spirit of depravity at disney too like you there's no way there's no way they were doing all that evil stuff at nickelodeon and disney wasn't talking about some twin where have you been i refuse to believe it i refuse let's see what else does she want me to talk about what shows have y'all been watching recently I've been watching a lot of Chinese dramas. I've been watching a lot of Chinese dramas to fill up the time. I also have been watching, for me, my guilty pleasure most definitely has to be medical dramas as well as Chinese dramas. I've been watching The Residents on Hulu and that show is so good. But tell me why as soon as I started to get really into the show, they done canceled it and i found out from twitter i i feel like every time i go on twitter all i get is bad news i don't think i ever go on twitter and i find out something positive it's always some wild nonsense that happens when i go on twitter like y'all saw the stuff that happened with the black girl gamers i'm trying so hard not to lose my faith in humanity but that situation made me sick to my stomach Okay, so Jay said, do you think every Disney show with kid stars had stuff going on behind the scenes? I think so. I 100% think so. Because we as a society do not protect kids. We do not protect kids at all. Like, for example, look at what happened with Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown and his downfall, we really need to, like, talk about it because... The fact that he practically started to spiral like that after his Disney show ended and the fact that the actress that played Chelsea keeps hinting like, hey, Orlando Brown knows what happens at Disney. I'm like, girl, you either you tell us or you, or you literally just stop talking because at this point you're teasing us and I don't like that. I'm talking about The Resident. The Resident is uh, HB... No, no, no. The, I think The Resident is an ABC show that they put on Hulu. It's practically about this Indian guy who gets a really mean resident, hence the name. And he practically learns how to become a good physician by practically getting bullied. <laughs> like, it, it started to piss me off in the first couple of episodes, but it was really heartwarming. Because the reason why, like, the white guy who is, like, the Indian guy's, um like teacher is so mean to him is because he knows that the hospital that they work at is awful so he's trying to make him what's gonna call it oh what m dragon trova hey hey what's up you guys wow i'm i'm really glad that i had the technical difficulties because according to my analytics most of y'all are up from like three to six so this is the peak time for y'all to be here hey guys hey but yeah i love 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 that show but i i don't know what it is about medical shows i'm gonna blame Grey's anatomy but whatever but whenever i start to really like a character <laughs> they be the first ones to go they be the first ones to go have y'all seen the drama that's going on with the rapunzel fan cast Man, guys, we need to say a prayer. 
I've been trying to stay the heck away from that discourse because so many people have been unserious with that conversation. But goodness gracious, that poor, poor girl. That poor girl has been catching so many strays for a fan cast, y'all. There has not been any serious talks about who is going to play Rapunzel in the live action remake, right? But these people have attacked this girl to the point where I'm like, she needs financial compensation. She needs financial compensation so bad. I think I really want to do a video about it. I low-key already did. If y'all watch my HBO, how HBO did fairy tales video. But Disney's effect on the landscape of folk tales and fairy tales has done such a I don't even know the proper world, but Disney has effed up fairy tales for everybody to the point where y'all think that only Disney has the right to make fairy tales. I've seen so many people say that, hey, Rapunzel has to be a blonde-haired white girl. Okay, maybe y'all want Rapunzel to be white. I'm okay with that. Okay, cool, right? It's, 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 it's a real shame that she's attacked. But if you guys had literally... I blame Disney. Everything goes back to Disney. Everything goes back to Disney. Because literally, the story of Rapunzel has been in so many cultures. Like, the, oh, like people are saying, oh, she needs to be German. Oh, she needs to be German. And then they keep pulling out fan casts of people who aren't even German. And if we're being so serious... I feel like these people aren't even Tangled fans for real. They're like, oh, she needs to be blonde. She needs to be blonde. If we're going off accuracy, Shadi needs to be brunette. The only reason why, like, in the Tangled version, Shadi had blonde hair <laughs> is because of the whole magic thing with Gotham. Let me read some of these comments. So... MJ Dragon said, I saw it's crazy. The actors played in... Child, don't get me started on the whole Romeo and Juliet thing. I just feel like we as a society have flung so far past all of the pro the progress that we've made that I really feel like there's no hope for us, bro. I don't know if y'all are in America, but recently um, by DC, we have this state called Maryland and there's a gigantic bridge there, right? The bridge collapsed because a cargo ship hit it a cargo ship a heavy gigantic cargo ship hit it and the mayor of baltimore because you know that's where the bridge collapsed came out and was like we are going to do our best to fix this issue right so many weirdos on twitter were like that's exactly why we should get rid of diversity and inclusion this would have never happened if we didn't have a dei mayor huh Guys, mind you, Baltimore is like a 60% black city. If we were if we're really talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, it would have to be someone who's not black if we're talking about DEI. And how can it be DEI when the people voted for the mayor? I just feel like the whole DEI warrior thing, as well as the black girl gamer thing and the Rapunzel thing are all indicative of our country just going the wrong way. <laughs> I just feel like we're cooked. I just feel like we are beyond cooked at this point. So M Dragon said, they love to pretend the fairy tales are so close to home and pretend changing Tiana or Mulan despite being from child. I just feel like these people are the most ingenuous people I've ever seen. The most disingenuous people I've ever seen. Because whenever I see people say like, okay, if you guys want to make Rapunzel Indian, let's make Tiana white. If we're being so serious, the princess and the frog, the original fairy tale, y'all can have it. Y bar for bar, if we're going bar for bar, y'all can have it. I just feel like because of the fact that Disney has put a monopoly on fairy tales, y'all don't realize that you can have a white princess and the frog imagining like bar for bar you can have it you can have it it's not the huge 
gotcha that people really think it is. It really is. And if you're going bar for bar, you can make a Princess and the Frog remake with white people. But if you're talking about Tiana, Tiana literally was based off an actual woman. Mulan, it was based off an actual folktale. And we're still a little iffy of if there was an actual Fa Mulan. But like, I just feel like when it comes to diversity in media, right? White women specifically are learning how it feels like to not be the forefront and the first choice for everything. And it's hitting them hard. I literally just came from TikTok, right? And I literally saw someone bawling, tears down their face, right? Tears literally running down their face because of this fan cast. Guys, mind you, my like this is this is just fan theory. This is just a what Matt Pat used to say, this is just a game theory, right? Right? But I saw Shawty crying, real, real people tears. Real people tears over a fan cast. And I'm just like, girl, you have to do better. You have to do better. Because when it comes to this stuff, right? People act like the inclusion of minorities is going to make the original work disappear. And I'm here to hold y'all hands very tightly and tell y'all that the original work is still going to be there. It's okay. Take a deep breath with me. Okay. Fantasy Enthusiast said, It's just so frustrating because we have enough white people with all our media. It's not... It's not just them that exist. We POC exist too and want to see ourselves. I feel like this is really leading into, I forgot what theory is called, but it's like the white erasure theory where a lot of white people are afraid that in like the next couple of decades, they're going to straight up just not exist, which is straight up not true. There will always be white people on this planet, but for because I don't want to say all white people, but for a good chunk of white people, they think that inclusion means exclusion because that's how they've been doing it for so long. If you guys don't know, I'm going to post a video about Star Trek Discovery real soon, like maybe tomorrow when I'm in class, right? But literally, <laughs> that cast has a lot of people of color in it, black people, Asians, right? But mind you, there are still white people in, in the show. On Twitter, they're talking about some, oh, so there's no white people in space now? But God, as my witness, I'm literally looking at the white people on the poster. But because white people aren't at the center of the poster, they just think, it's a damn shame, they just think that we're trying to get rid of white people. And it's because that's how they have been doing it for the longest. But it's literally... When we want inclusion, we're not trying to exclude, we're not trying to exclude white people. And I just feel like, I don't know, I mean, it makes me extremely sad that this is how the internet has been for the last couple of days. That poor girl, that poor girl, like, the fact that she still has her comments on goes, is like a testimony to her strength because people are calling her everything but a child of the Lord. Like, Loki the sim that I made is giving me very much Indian-inspired because I just feel like she would make a great Rapunzel. The... <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. This is such a damn shame. Because, like, when it comes to fairy tales, I grew up on HBO's, like, happily... Like, I forgot the full title, but HBO had a fairy tale series where it was extremely diverse. It was extremely diverse, and we literally saw so many different cultures represented in fairy tales. I saw, like, a Korean Snow White. I saw a Native American Snow White. I saw an African Princess and a Frog. I saw an African Beauty and the Beast. Like, I'm not new to this, baby. I'm true to this. But the fact that y'all, I feel like you can't really tell whose parents, you can't really tell who had good parents growing up just based off this Twitter discourse. Because it's a fairy tale. And no tea, no shade. But if you guys know anything about Indian women, Indian women have some of the longest, healthiest hair on this entire planet. Like the like currently right now, the woman with the 
longest hair in the Guinness Book of Records is literally an Indian woman. And you know what it is? Let me spill some tea. Let me spill some tea. Y'all talking about some, oh, we just want... Y'all talking about some, we just want Rapunzel to look like how she looked like in the Disney thing. Okay, okay. Right? But why, if y'all are so set on all the characters looking like how the characters look like in the original Tangled works, right? Why are y'all all of a sudden okay with that actress playing Mother Gothel? I wish I had the Twitter thread up so y'all can see what I'm talking about. But someone made like a fake tweet from Pop Crave talking about some, she has been approved to play Mother Gothel. And everybody in the comments was like, yes, she'd actually be perfect for that role because she has wrinkles. Child, that, that, that young lady just turned 18. Y'all have to be so serious. The only reason why we're really upset at, ooh, guys, this dress is given. I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this. The fact that y'all are so upset, the reason why y'all are so upset is that you guys don't want women of color in these roles that you idolize. Because when someone suggested that that actress should play Mother Gothel, everybody all of a sudden stopped caring about accurate representation. No one cared about the German origin, even though the original Rapunzel story was Persian. Everybody was like, yeah, all of a sudden, everybody was like, yeah, this is a great idea. And that's because you guys don't want women of color in these hyper-feminine roles. Oh, sorry. Vex Sims Flex Production said, you're the truth. New sub, love the content. Thank you for subbing. But that's how I know you guys are disingenuous. Because when the whole Hallie situation came about, the racism, the racism was out of this world. The racism was out of this world. But when there was like so many cases of a black woman playing Ursula, the plus size villain, no one said nothing. No one was talking about you're taking, like you're taking representation from fat white girls. No one said that. No one said that. Because as long as women of color are the villains or the comedic relief, <laughs> it's, it's fine with y'all. It's fine with y'all. The issue becomes, the issue comes into play when we are placed into roles that are the feminine roles. And I, that really just makes me sick. In my heart of hearts, that generally makes me so sick. Also, happy Eid for all of those who are celebrating. I meant to mention that earlier, but happy Eid, y'all. Oh, I am just so upset for her. But on good news, she is going to be playing a princess regardless. She is, um, I think the book is called Wishes to Come. Let me see, let me see the book. I'm pretty sure the book is called Wishes to Come. And she's going to be playing a princess in that. So while everybody is hating on her and literally calling her everything but a child of the Lord, she's going to be a princess, a Disney princess regardless. Like, that's why I'm just like, she, she caught so many strays. She caught so many strays. And she did not have to. She did not have to catch strays. And so, just talking about uh, an Indian Rapunzel has just made me feel so inspired to make this sim <laughs> inspired by Indian culture. I'm trying to find my Bindi CC. I have a ridiculous amount of Bindis. Let's see, let's see, let's see. But I just feel like, oh, for me, right, when it comes to the live action remakes of the classic Disney stories, I literally see them as an uh, alternate universe from the main Disney properties. And I definitely recommend that y'all do the same thing too. Because you'll just be overall less disappointed if you see these live action remakes as an alternate universe like i did not like the live action bell and even though i love cinderella the general audience did not like the live action cinderella so even when the casting is accurate like how y'all be screaming for from the rooftop like screaming from the rooftops that y'all want y'all not supporting it y'all only I'm a big proponent of putting your time and energy into the works that you want to see. Like on my channel, 
whenever I talk about racists and people who are literally like undercover clans members, right? I make sure that I plug in black authors and black creatives so people can go support the diversity and equity that we want to see, right? Right? But y'all don't do that. Y'all only hate on this, in, in quotation marks, woke media, and then don't go support the works that y'all say y'all want so bad. And I just, that, that really just pisses me off because go support the things you want to support. If you really did not like The Little Mermaid, you need to not watch it. A lot of the times, bad press is still press. Don't talk about it. Literally don't engage with it. And that's how things die off. If you really like to see people represented accurately, then you need to go support that representation. The fact that the live action Cinderella where Shawty was white did not do well was extremely disappointing because y'all if y'all know me i love a good cinderella story me and cindy we be like this we be like this but y'all didn't even go support that and that is the race accurate casting that y'all say y'all love so much but y'all didn't go support that i feel like a lot of these people just have the spirits of hatefulness in them and they just can't help but to only spread negativity. And I'm really praying that y'all get over that. Like, rent is too high. Gas is too high. Everything is too high for y'all to be acting like this. And I really hope y'all get it together. Because, guys, it would be so fun to see an Indian... It would be so fun to see an Indian uh, Rapunzel. <laughs> like, we, like, guys... You mean to tell me, like, come on now, don't play in my face. Like, an Indian Rapunzel will be so, so good. And I just feel like if Disney really wants to, I feel like Disney be doing this ish on purpose. Like, using all of, like, the conservative woke mob in order to get more people to, like, watch their shows and then hate on it too. Because I feel like they don't be doing enough to protect the actresses who they be bringing into the nonsense. Like, I still tremble thinking about the way Hallie was treated to this day. I pray that no one, no one, no one, no one ever faces this much hate and scrutiny. Like, they were making edits of her, I don't even know if I could say this word, but her being attached to trees. That's why I'm like, guys, let's keep this, let's keep every Indian actress away from Disney. I don't want to see I don't want to see it because I just can't imagine the mental health toll that these actresses are going through. And Disney, I know Disney is not supporting them. And in terms of people not supporting their co-stars, why is uh Tom Holland not supporting his leading lady? The fact that she is getting like guys, she caught so many strays. She it's gotten so bad that she's even getting bullied in Korea. Like the girl who's playing the new Juliet. Oh, oh, that poor, poor girl. That poor, poor girl. I'm telling y'all now, we need to safeguard these women so bad. Like the actress that played the young lady Danbury even had to come out and was like, hey, Tom Holland, uh... Why are you not helping your lead? Like, that's literally the person you are going to be doing a press one with. Like, speak up, say something. Ooh. Ooh. Like, I, I did not know that man could get as quiet as he has gotten during this situation. Like, like damn. I, I would have thought, like, a, a cute little tweet. Like, guys, bigotry is not okay. I'm, I'm standing by her. Silence. I don't know if the media team has put them on a shut up order <laughs> but damn this is like i feel i can't go on twitter like the only reason i got on twitter is to hang out with my a song of ice and fire friends but like twitter is literally hell like elon musk is a menace to society and i'm praying for the day that someone can buy twitter from out of him like just buy up Twitter because he has let that like he has let Twitter be such a negative space. Like, don't even get me started on like the NSFW people who comment on 
everything. Like, it's so... <laughs> it literally just pisses me off so much. Like, I remember there's this girl on Twitter, and she literally was like, guys, please pray for me. My dad just died. And then this girl, like, she's one of the, like, only fan girls, was like, your dad would have loved my kitty cat. Hello? Hello? Like, don't piss me off. Don't piss me off. It's the OnlyFans girls who are literally, like, like, I get it. You're trying to promote your business, but you don't have to promote your business under everything. It's them and then the DEI warriors, like, the people who, like, you can literally just be black. And they're like, this is exactly why we need to get rid of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like, like, damn. You won't even do nothing. You'll just exist as a person of color. And they're like, this is exactly why we need to get rid of DEI. This is exactly why we need to get rid of DEI. Like, damn. I don't know if y'all saw the tweet of the, the white guy who was like, if I saw a black woman and she was piloting this plane, I would ask to get on a different plane because how am I supposed to know that she can I'm sorry. That she can, that she can pilot the plane. And I just want to really get to know what these people are thinking when they tweet this stuff. I don't know if they think that just because of a lot of these diversity and equity, you know, incentives that like these people don't go to testing, that these people are literally just coming as they are, coming as they are. But you literally have to go through training. You you have to. It's a safety issue. Nobody wants to be sued for crashing a plane. I don't know. Sometimes when it comes to these people, there's there's no arguing with them. You just have to look at them, put your hands up, and walk away slowly. You have to walk away slowly, y'all. These people are scary. These people are scary. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sibling of my sim and practically use some of my... I have a lot of hijabs. I literally don't have a lot of hijabis in my actual Sims 4 Let's Play. But I have a ridiculous amount of hijabs. So I'm practically going to make two sisters and let them have like their own unique looks. But yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Actually, I want to make this sister have blonde hair. Just because. Just because. I've been feeling the spirit, the spirit of Rapunzel. Well, y'all cannot tell me how beautiful an Indian Rapunzel would be. Like, maybe y'all need to give it to another studio so people can relax. M maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what we need to do. But I feel like Disney, Disney has just not, I don't know, y'all. I don't know what's going on, but we need to... I think we just need to take all of the princesses away from, uh, what's gonna call it? Disney. I do have an Instagram. I'm pretty sure it's Ella Pastoral, but I, I am not active on Inst. I'm telling you this right now. I am not active on Instagram at all. If you really want to, uh, be on social medias that I'm active on, you have to hit me up on Tumblr. Me and Tumblr be like this, especially since all of the wild evil people left during the Tumblr apocalypse and went to Twitter and TikTok. And I do be on Twitter, but I do not know how to use Twitter. But the main sites are definitely TikTok. I be on there every hour. It's a problem. My screen time be looking wild. And Tumblr. But if you don't have those social media sites, I guess you can technically find me on Twitter. I guess technically you can find me on Twitter. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Are y'all going to watch Bridgerton? How many of y'all in the chat are Bridgerton people? I was talking about it earlier when there was less people, but... I, I'm trying my hardest to be excited for it. I'm trying my hardest to be excited for it. But I, spiritually, I am not looking forward to the Bridgerton series. But I'm excited to talk to my friends about it. 
that's the only way I'm, I'm making it through. Let's see. Uh, I'm sorry. When it comes to blondes, you have to find the specific blonde that matches your skin tone. You have to find the specific blonde that matches your skin tone. And I think it's this. Okay, cool. Ask me questions, y'all, in the chat. Don't worry. I'm very much peace, love, and positivity. Unless, it, unless it's wild. I might still answer, though. I, I might still answer, depending. Let's see. I'm trying to find another Indian-style dress for her to wear. To be honest, most of my dresses are more Arab-inspired than anything. Let's see. Oh. I really have so much CC, y'all. For my people who are playing The Sims, I don't know how many of y'all's games, like, imploded with the Crystal Creations, like, pack patch. But my game is literally to the point of being unplayable. Okay, so... M Dragon said, I have only watched the first season and I was turned off by the issues with it and the colorism in Queen Charlotte, but I may have to catch up. Personally, I feel like the way Queen Charlotte handled colorism was pretty good. I mean, considering the time, I feel like they low-key ate it up because when I was watching the first season of Bridgerton, I was like, what do you mean that you guys were segregated 50 years ago and now racially everyone's integrated that still don't make any sense to me that still don't make any sense to me but i really liked how queen charlotte handled it because i was like there's no way y'all just cured racism and if y'all did you guys have to give us your game card because like i was talking with like just like how i was talking about with the rapunzel situation if y'all could end racism in just 50 years please i'm begging give us your game card Give us your game card, please. Let's see. What? Rapunzel was like a pink girly, right? Child, I'm eating this up. I'm eating this up, y'all. It's been so long since I just took the time to make a sim. What's going on here? Why is her hair so dark? Yes. I ate this up. I ate this up real bad. Real bad. Okay, Esther says, not Bridgerton, but how are you feeling about Black Swan? Love their girls. Love those girls. They're so, they're all so authentic and talented and Fatu seems so much happier. Personally, I haven't seen, I, like I mostly keep up with the girls on TikTok. And the last time I saw them, I think the, what's I'm gonna call it, the Indian member, she, she was doing like a mukbang. And people were really upset with her because, like, she expected to eat something savory and it ended up being sweet. And for some, and for some reason that caused controversy. But the girls look like they're having a good time in Korea. The girls look like they're having a good time in Korea. And that's, listen, with, with all of the stuff that be going on in Korea, all I can say is that I'm happy that they're happy. I'm waiting for more music, though. Because the last song they put out was, like, the, the little cute aesthetic song with, like, Cat and Mouse, right? So, I, I mean, if y'all can drop a mini album or something, like, the girls want a little more. I don't know. The K-pop music industry is kind of in shambles. Like, I don't know if y'all saw the Beyonce gift that was, like, nobody wants to put out real music. Everybody wants to put out a short little thing, a short little thing. And I have to say that's so true. Nobody be putting out full-length albums. Nobody does it. All we have to do is take, is take what we can get in stride. But I don't want these girls to be too stressed. Y'all already know how hard it is for people like the K-pop idols, you know? I said, in fact, relax. Do the mukbangs. Be free. Be free. Let me drink some water. Okay. Let's see. I really love these Manwell lashes. Like, they're so cute and they're so dainty. 
So Esther said, they've been saying their comeback is coming soon. Okay. Tell them we're ready. Whenever they're ready, we'll be ready. We're here to support them. We're, we're absolutely here to support them. Ooh. Since we're on the tape, like the topic of Black Swan, I've been dying to make a video about the whole keep Korean, keep K-pop Korean thing for so long. It's just that I hate to bring this up every two seconds, but because of the fact that I'm in school, I haven't had the time to tap in. But that is a conversation I've been dying to talk about. Okay, Esther says, and Fatu said, it's a lot of music too. See, that's why I love Fatu. She's the leader that we need. She know she knew exactly what we wanted to hear. But guys, the whole keep Korean, <laughs> keep K-pop Korean movement has had me in shambles, bro. Because if y'all don't know, K-pop is one of the most culture vulture type things in the entirety of music. Like, first they took rap. Then they took R&B. And guys, they have moved to Afro beats. They have moved to Afro beats, y'all. Okay. A uh, Kajam Valentine says, I like K-pop, but I feel like it's now just English pop with Korean singers. I wish there was less English and more Korean like there used to be. And Esther said, ooh, what a mess. Personally, for me, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I have to agree with Kajan. I have to agree with Kajan. Like, no, no tea, no shade. Before the armies, because like, I'm telling you, as soon as you mentioned BTS, the armies magically spawn. I don't know where they be coming from, but they be spawning. I was a huge BTS girly. Like, I was a huge BTS girly for sure, right? But then they went to the United States and they started making songs like, butter uh what's the other i don't know what the other song is if y'all remember the other english song they came out when they came out to like when they came to america but i was like lord god this is the worst thing i've ever heard and it was bad there's no way i can lie to y'all and not <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It was it was really bad. Because when I tell you like old BTS before they all had to go to the the military for their mandatory, you know, conscription, they used to be putting out bangers. But because of their like because but because of the fact that they were trying to appeal to US audiences or whatever. Sorry, my, my mom was uh, home. Dynamite! Thank you, Kajan. It was dynamite. <sighs> Trying to appeal to audiences that aren't your audience always goes wrong. It's the same way when Shea Moisture changed their hair formula to cater to people with like 1A hair types. How that went extremely wrong because you know for a fact that was in your target demographic. Like, if they would have came to the U.S. with, like, the vibes they got from um, Airplane, Airplane Part 2, what, what's another, um, you know how Nam, June, Hobie, and Yoongi, they be doing their ciphers? If they came to the United States with that energy, I feel like it would have been an extreme, like, it would have transcended music as we know it. Because when they were in their hardcore rap era... Ooh, not this. Ooh, not this. Ooh, not this. Ooh. Ooh, okay. I said, please, where my modest clothes at? If they would have came to the United States, right, with that energy, I really felt like they would have gotten more respect. But I really... Who told them we wanted this? Army. Army did. Army did. Because when I heard Dynamite, I said, okay, you know, not every, not every comeback is going to be my ideal comeback but butter is when i drew the line and i and it's not just the english vibes too it was specifically those two songs because jungkook jungkook with his u.s debut back to back like every song he was eating it up every song he was eating it up but i don't, I don't know what happened i don't know what happened i don't know if they specifically saved the songs 
for the, like the good songs for Jungkook. But guys, ooh, like I, I'm so glad that I'm getting this off my chest because I've been keeping this to myself for the longest because I was scared ARMY was going to get me. But I was just like, this is not, this is not my BTS. It's not. It's, it's really not. But I'm so glad I'm getting this off my chest. But yes, I definitely did appreciate the, I, I, I definitely miss when K-pop was in Korean. But when people are talking about the, the movement is keep Korea, keep K-pop Korean, they're practically saying they don't want foreigners, which is so wild because a lot of the most popular foreigners and K-pop be like this, y'all. They be like this. Like, um, what's that song? Give me a second. Give me a second. I just downloaded it. I just downloaded it. It's the song where like, it's the, the hip dance. I know that probably is the worst description of it, but I got the song. I just downloaded it on Apple Music. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Is it Maniac? Is it Maniac? I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't. I'm gonna use my fingers to try to describe it, but like it's the hip dance where they're dancing, they put the hip like this and they move the they hips up and down, right? That was a popular, a popular dance all over K-pop TikTok, right? That was choreographed by a whole black, black woman. A lot of the popular songs that are K-pop classics were demos made by black people, but then sold to Koreans rap for some reason by force i'm still trying to figure this out a lot of these k-pop groups who have no business having a rap line cough cough half the girl groups they have a rap line and you know who made rap black people so whenever the, i just filmed like a whole video talking about garu but it's it's a resonance a resonant topic that I have to always bring up because when y'all be like we don't want foreigners here we don't want foreigners here but are you going to stop using the contributions that foreigners gave you no because literally when the whole keep k-pop korean thing happened right because i forgot like there's a subgenre of k-pop that was way before Western influence. That's like a jazzy type. I forgot what it's called, but it sounds very much like a showgirl type-esque music. And that hits. And that's K-pop with no Western influence, right? But they won't go back to that. Because right now, everybody wants to be BTS. Everybody is trying to be BTS so bad. The spirit of BTS is possessing people, right? To the point that they want to hit it big in America. I promise, I, I promise I saw like 80s, 80s, 80s on Good Morning America. Esther said, period, the choreographer for Mania called Candy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's because they only like black culture when it's not with black people they love box braids just not on black people they love dark skin just not on black people they love big lips just not on black people see that's why i'm loving y'all in the chat y'all always hold me responsible because i was like i know I, this is just me freelancing off my head like this is just me freelancing off my head but thank you for mentioning her name because that choreography went crazy like I could not escape that dance for weeks. I could not escape that dance for weeks. And they were eating it up. They were literally eating it up. And I don't know if you guys saw the newest K-pop song on TikTok, but it's like the one that's like a water, water by Tyla. It's like the water by Tyla ripoff. That's like, mana mana me, 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 me. Mana mana si, 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 si. And it's by La Seraphine. Like, you mean to tell me y'all want to keep K-pop Korean? Like, that is a Tyler ripoff. That is a Tyler ripoff if I... Like, come on, y'all. I might have been born someday, but I was not born yesterday. Like, everybody needs to be serious. Huh? 
I'm sorry, I'm trying to tap in for the skin, the skin features here. What? Harry, girl, what you doing here? What? Guys, it's my friend Harry. Say hi, y'all. Say hi. Oh, my. Girl, what you doing here? We were just talking about the, you know, for me, I keep trying to say that I've, I've escaped the clutches of K-pop, but I always manage to find my way back. We were literally just talking about the whole keep K-pop Korean thing and how much nonsense it is. Like if, like it would have to be like some type of cultural shift for, let me see. Yes. <laughs> Yes, oh my gosh, me and Harry have been tearing it up, man, in terms of the crack ships, y'all. We have been tearing it up in terms of the crack ships. Oh, Disney X JJK was one of the best things that have come out in the last couple of years. It literally is the gift that keeps on giving. To be honest, like what I did in order to choose peace is that I try not to know these groups because whenever I become like really invested in these groups, they always manage to disappoint me. The last group that I was putting my heart um, and my effort into was 50-50 and they're literally being sued. <laughs> they're literally being sued for plagiarism. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. K-pop got some scary fans. Oh yeah. You know it's bad when even the idols themselves are scared. <laughs> like, child, I still think about how uh, God 7, God 7 was treated. Guys, I'm begging you, don't ever stalk nobody. Don't ever stalk nobody. Flex Sim says, the music industry is not what it seems. There's much being exposed this year about the dirty games that are being played to stay relevant. Diddy, Diddy. Bro, I cannot wait to see your video on the JJ. Whenever you talk about any ships, bro, I'd be so excited because it's always the best. Like, if you guys don't know, Harry makes a lot of good fan art and fanfic. And, like, for me, I knew about this, like, these ships, but Harry really said, let me do, let me do my big one. Let me do my big one. Ooh, I hate how you had to censor, censor the B word. Even I... I'm sorry, that caused a little chill. A little chill to go up my spine. Yes. Yes. Don't, mm, mm, just thinking about it. Ooh, don't summon them now, please, please. Don't summon them now, I get so scared. I get so scared, y'all, ooh. Especially the, I can't even say their name. I'm so scared. Be shaking in my boots. Y'all, can y'all believe my video for the Has Been Hotel? It's still demonetized. I, I'm still mad about that. I was just telling Harry, bro, like, what do I gotta do for YouTube to set me free, bro? Like, I'm still trying to figure out what I did to end up in demonetization jail, but I must have done something. I really wanted to have that video uploaded this Thursday, but until they tell me what I did wrong so I can fix it, we just gonna have to be looking at each other. Also, happy Eid to anybody who just came on. Uh, please hit the thumbs up button, y'all. It really helps push the video out to more people. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ciao. So, Harry, you remember when I made that uh that little YouTube short talking about the JJK? uh crack ships to this day and i promise it's been months it's been months it's been months it's been months since i posted that little tiktok youtube short thing i literally still have people commenting like oh my gosh sorry <laughs> i don't know what they're doing outside my house but i wish they were relaxed i physically don't understand what the appeal is i thought it was something like a cute ha ha he he but no people really ship sakuna x cinderella i thought it was a cute ha ha but no, people are, are actually serious. And yes, YouTube needs to give me my money. They need to give me my cash. I Listen, I think I know what... To be honest, I in that video, I did talk about the... I can't even... I, I'm shaking in my boots because 
I'm really just shaking in my boots. But I did talk about how there are lots of minors in the has been hotel fandom and how it's been extremely unsafe for minors in that fandom. So I'm really thinking that's why YouTube has been giving me the side eye. But I need them to tell me, like, I'm doing a lot of guessing when they can do a lot of telling. But yes, Toji X Magora is something that we really need to clock into. I feel like they, like, the same way I feel like there's a lot of actual good chemistry between Nanami and Tiana is the same way there is a lot of good chemistry between, let me see, Grace said baffling. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Yes. They are actually so, so serious about Sukuna and Cinderella. And I don't want to spoil no nothing for nobody who hasn't been keeping up with JJK. And I promise I won't. But y'all, when I tell you that Sukuna needs to stay the hell away from my girl Cindy. He needs to stay the hell away from her. Like, that man is awful. Cindy deserves, Cindy deserves what Tiana has. I, I don't know who. I don't know who we could ship her with, but not Sukuna. Sukuna needs to be shipped with a prison cell. Sukuna needs to be shipped with a graveyard. Cindy, free Cindy. Yo, I love how you be on it with the cosplays, bro. You be on it. Once they free me from the hell that is nursing school, I gotta get my cosplay back. I gotta get my cosplay back. I've just been trying to do a little incorporation of like alternative styles to make it feel like I'm doing something, but it's not enough. It's not enough. If y'all got any sim requests, let me know, y'all. Uh, let me, for all of the new people who just joined, we were talking about the whole Rapunzel situation and how people, white women specifically, hate, hate women of color. But let me show you my Indian Rapunzel. You know, I had to come up with the little braid action. I wish I had longer hair. I probably do because I literally have like 200 gigabytes of, you know, CC. But imagine the vibes, guys. Imagine the vibes. Imagine the vibes. Child. So Kuna needs more than help. <laughs> I don't think... So, I don't know if you saw the memes on TikTok that were like me waiting to see if Sukuna has a tragic backstory when he literally is just an awful person. Because when Yuji like ate the finger and he possessed Yuji, and the first thing that came out of his mouth, uh, like out of his mouth was, where are the women and children? I was like, this man is unredeemable. There's no help. Uh... You said, I really hope no one is been... <laughs> oh, please. That, that'd be wild. You have been so, like, you have been standing on business about your hatred of the Sukunella ship. Child. Every day I pray for every woman of color that y'all put in these fan casts. <laughs> like, y'all have, like, I, I was telling, I was just telling them that, like, I really just don't want y'all to include women of color in these spaces. Because there is no amount of therapy that can help help with the amount of racism that has been shown to that innocent girl. You know, she only turned 18 recently, and they're talking about she will be an excellent Mother Gothel? Hello? Mother Gothel? Y'all have to stop playing with me. Y'all have to stop. I'm turning on the fan, because I got the ring lights. I got the Sims. I'm literally about to catch on fire. Like, people be getting on me for real for liking Toji. He is not nearly bad as Sukuna and Ghetto. Those two are too far gone. So, when it comes to the character of Ghetto, I cannot understand, like, for me, I'm like, is it him possessed? Is it the version of him that's possessed? Or is it a version of him that wasn't possessed? You feel me? But yes, everything you're saying is valid. Everything you're... Like, Toji, I just thought we were just, like, doing a little hee-hee-ha-ha -ha because he likes money. Oh, sorry. I thought she just turned... Okay, so when I saw the tweet on Twitter, they are like, she's freshly 18. Maybe they meant she's freshly 19. But she... Regardless, that girl is way too young to be playing no mother gothel. But people are seriously, like, inst... Ugh. Just to reiterate... 
people are so disingenuous when it comes to representation because they're like they want it to be accurate that's what they kept saying right that's what they kept saying right but not everyone is okay with her playing mother Gothel. yeah okay okay just to clear that up she is 19 she's 19 she still has I, I refuse to believe that y'all think that she looks old enough to be Mother Gothel. Like, I don't know who, who started that. That's as an idea, but come on, guys. Come on. Mother Gothel is a aged woman. She's like, a, like, she's old. And that's okay. She's an older woman. Let me drink some water. Okay, let me see another thing that I wanted to talk about is that when it comes to the fan cast for Flynn you guys are very adamant on that one I don't know if I can say this but there is one person that y'all keep putting for the fan cast of Finn and I do not want him anywhere near this movie the dude from the the zombies movies I, I don't want to see him no more no more. I would like to see a new actor if possible. I would like to see a new actor if possible. Quickly, please. I'm going to try to make some male sims. I struggle greatly in terms of making male sims. So please, please be gentle with me, y'all. This is going to be a journey. It's going to be a journey amongst us. Okay. Okay, okay. How are we gonna do this? Ooh, how are we gonna do this? Sorry, I really suck at making male sims. Okay, whoa. I'm cooked. I'm generally cooked. Child. Yes, the dude from zombies. Like, <laughs> ooh, wee, hoo wee. I do not want to see that man nowhere near that movie. Nowhere near that movie. Y'all can keep it. Mm -mm. Y'all can keep it. Y'all can keep it. Y'all can keep it. Y'all can keep it. I don't know. There's something about him that I've had enough from. Hey, Harry, I'm begging. Don't set me up like that. <laughs> don't set. Like, that's like you asking me to make Nanami. The only reason I was able to make Nanami in The Sims is because somebody already made Nanami in The Sims. I took it, <laughs> added some nice hair and some details, but Toji? Harry, please, I'm begging you, please, not in front of the public. Please, please. I have, I have to save, I have to save myself because no, especially, oh! Just thinking about it has me having heart palpitations. Like me, I'm really good at making female sims. Making male sims? Making attractive male sims? And I, I'm telling you now, get, give me, give me in the summer. That's when I will have perfected, right? That's when I will have perfected my sim making skills. Because I, I haven't strayed outside of my comfort zone. Especially buff dudes. Buff, like yo, Toji, like. I don't even know how to describe his, his build. Like, he's so muscular and then his waist is so teeny tiny. Oh, no. Not in front of the public, please. That's like a five-day thing and then I, I, I show up with the end results. <laughs> no, it's like a speed paint. It's like a speed paint. No, please. Sorry, Harry. I promise, I promise. Once I learn how to make male sims and make them look good, Toji will be first on the list. I don't know how many people in here have actually played The Sims, but has anyone's game just broke after the Crystal Creations patch? Like, I have literally been trying for days at this point, right? to get my game to work my game is beyond fried like the creator sim portion 
great as you can see by the fact that this is my third sin that I'm making but actually playing the game I'm cooked it's to the point where I've repaired the game I've taken out my mods and I've even I even forcefully had to update cooked 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 and I feel so bad because I don't want to go onto the discord server because they literally said, hey guys, we are not taking help. We are not helping anyone for the short time notice. Let's see. Kagan. Girl, I'm playing The Sims right now. And I've had... <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. Okay. And, and did you update? Did you update? Because the only reason why I updated is that um, I play with Royal Sims. Me, that's the only way I be playing The Sims. I play with Royals, right? And all of my Royal portraits just mysteriously disappeared. So I was like, damn it. This is a sign from God that I need to, like, update my game. Then I updated my game, and now my game is unplayed. Like, I literally can't play with any of my households. And, and that has disturbed me spiritually. Uh, Nanami is from JJK. I hear his name a lot. I don't know that much about him. Let me preach to you the good word about Nanami Kento. So, Nanami Kento is literally... So, I don't know if you know about this phrase, but it's called, like, men written by women. Nanami is a great example of that. Like, hmm. how do I even explain Nanami? How do I even explain? So, Nanami is, like, a salary worker. And he is just such a kind, compassionate man. <sighs> He's great with kids. So, there's a scene in Jujutsu Kaisen, right? Y'all know they be having them kids like child soldiers, practically. And he practically told the main character, Yuji, like, like, don't even worry about this. I'm an adult. I'm supposed to be the one who takes care of you. And he is always going out of his way to protect the teenage protagonist of the show. And he's just so responsible and he's so kind. And he treats the women around him like people. Which is not something we see a lot in anime. Especially not especially in anime that's not for uh women and that's why we love nanami nanami is literally we just love nanami we just love nanami we love nanami uh kagan said i have updated it in his just <laughs> yes and what's so evil about the sims team is that while i'm suffering trying to figure out why my game is broken beyond fixation at this point they released another update. And the updates, like, I promise the updates don't ever fix nothing. Like, like if they fix stuff, I'd be like, okay, you know. You know, you know. They doing their job for real. But, like, they'd be like, oh, we updated the game, so now there's more color swatches on the doorknobs. And, and somehow that manages to break the game. Guys... If it wasn't for how good The Sims looked and how the modders and CC creators be doing their job, The Sims 4 would be unplayable. It is unplayable. I haven't been able to play it, but I I'm just letting it slide for real because I'm literally in cast. I'm trying to do like a uh, Indian Flynn Rider, <laughs> but like I said, I'm so bad at making male Sims <laughs> that I'm just like, oh, I'm cooked. Oh, I'm cooked. I I'm trying to remember what Flynn looks like from muscle memory. But let me pull up a picture. That that's how you that's how, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say I'm I'm really bad at male sims. But like he, he's looking like you know he he has the vibes, right? Right? Like the hair, the hair is hearing. Yeah. Right guys? Right? Right? Kind of, right? Like, maybe he has too much facial hair. Maybe that's the issue. I'm sorry. <laughs> when it comes to male sims, I'm really cooked. I'm really, really, really cooked. I promise, guys, when the summer comes and I can finally spend time honing my, you know, hobbies and, you know, oh, kind of, kind of. Yeah, yeah, thank you. 
I'm like, you know, I also have a ridiculous amount of presets. So I just got to make it work. But once I graduate, like guys, I'm telling you one more month, one more month, they'll set me free. They'll set me free, bro. And then I'll be able to really hone in on my, on my hobbies. Like before y'all came in, I was just talking about how I want to do a video about the Omegaverse so bad and do a deep dive on how, how the Omegaverse came into fruition. And then do a video about fan fiction because I feel like the Omegaverse and the whole wild world of fan fiction are so closely interlocked. But I don't really have time to research it because for some reason, even though I graduate in a month, my school does not care about the mental health of its students. Like, we still have, like, we have one more exam for my Como class, two more quizzes, one more big pro Wait. I don't even want to count. I don't even want to count. I want to be all peace, love, and positivity, guys. I want to be all peace, love, and positivity because, dang, if I start thinking about school too much, I'm going to start getting upset. I'm going to start getting upset. Guys, but you will not believe this. Tell me why my friend was walking from our campus and she literally saw like bloody footprints on the ground as she was walking to the garage from our school. And literally our school sent out an email and was like, hey guys, relax. It's not that serious. Our campus is one of the safest in the city. And I said, D like guys, it wasn't like shoe prints. It was straight up bloody footprints, like a foot. And it, it went on for like miles. And I'm like, I feel like we need a more in-depth explanation than, oh guys, it's okay, it's resolved. Because what what happened that it's resolved? What happened? They, they sent out an email and they told us nothing. I don't know. My school, 0 out of 10 would not recommend. I would not. <laughs> I would not recommend it. But I'm so glad that a bunch of people came. I was having so many technical issues when I try when I tried to do the live the first time. I'm really hoping that I'm able to do more of this in the future. After I graduate, graduation gang, class of 2024 vibes. Because I wanted to do this stuff more. It's listen. When House of the Dragon, an interview with the vampire, premieres, you guys will start to get sick of me because I promise I'm going to have to be on live every night. I'm going to have to be on live every night, y'all. Those are my shows. Those are my shows. I literally think the newest season of Interview with a Vampire comes out. I want to say either May 12th or May 19th. It's on my calendar. But guys, you will be hearing from me. You will be hearing from me. I'm not even joking. Let's see. Let's see. You see how I have so much mail CC, but I don't know what I'm doing? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's something about making masculine presenting sims. This is why, like, all of the main characters in my Simperial series are women. I, I just, I just know what I know. I just know what I know, y'all. I just, I just know what I know. It's gonna have to do. It's gonna have to do. But guys, ask me questions. Let's do like a Q and A. Let's do a Q and A while I'm, I'm figuring out what I. I'm figuring out how to dress him. I'm cooked. <laughs> no rest, no peace. No rest, no peace. <sighs> I'm sorry, my friend just sent another picture of the bloody footprints. Like, hello? I don't know guys, there's a lot of mysteries, but I am not Daphne and I am definitely not Velma. 
I am not doing an investigation. If the school wants to say that there's no war in Boxing say I'm just going to have to pretend that I'm down with it. So, I am not someone who reads manga. If Harry, if you're here, Harry's the one who reads manga. I'm the one who reads manhwa. And that's the, like, Korean comic books. Like, I'm a manhwa girly. And I'm someone who's very niche in her interest. So, for me, I specifically read historical villainous manhwas. So, for example, the villainous turns back the hourglass. Actually, I was the real one. Um, what else? Beware the villainous. I'm sorry, y'all. That was my phone. Beware the villainous. Those are the like manwas I definitely recommend. Ooh, um, one manwa that I've been reading a lot that I really like that's so funny is Miss Not So Sidekick. That manwa has had me into tears because it's just like the main character is so unserious. So she literally befriended the main, the female lead. And whenever she, the female lead, and the male love interest be interacting, Shawty literally pulls out popcorn and she starts eating. Like, she's so unserious. Like, she literally pulls out popcorn and she starts eating while the scenes are unfolding and no one stops her. What exactly is a light novel? I've seen people say that quite frequently. But I haven't actually read a light novel before. I'm thinking, nah, I can't even lie, I haven't read a light novel. Like, what what light novels have you been reading? Because me, I, I know where home is. I always go back to the manhwa community, even though they have a lot of, a lot, a lot. They have a lot of, a whole lot of. Did anyone actually watch the Tangle series? My friend Dami, she is obsessed with that series. Okay, so translated online novel similar to a fanfic. Oh! Oh! A lot of the manhwas that I like are um, originally light novels that got adapted into manhwas. But for me, I'm a little bit iffy on that because sometimes, like, one of the biggest gripes about reading stuff is that you'll read the OG work and you'll be like, yeah, like, it's really, really good. And then they'll adapt it and you'll get pissed. Like, how they did with A Song of Ice and Fire. How they did with Game of Thrones. How they did with A School for Good and Evil. I'm still upset about that. A lot of manga, manhwa, manhwa, and anime are based off them. Yes. One, like, light novel that I want to read so bad, but I have no idea where to, like, find out about it is... I don't know if you guys know it, but, like, I'm pretty sure you would. It's about these two... It's, it's a Chinese light novel about these two dudes, right? And I think that's enough of a description. Because literally everybody who is in the manhwa community has read that. But I physically don't know where they're reading it. I have no... Maybe it's on Webtoons? Maybe it's in Webtoons? Yeah, uh, Albi said, yeah... Haha, <laughs> yeah, it does kind of ruin the animations for me. Because you're like, where's my favorite character at? They somehow always manage to remove my favorite character, and no matter what they adapt. Like, remember, well, this isn't specifically like an animation issue, but remember when they literally removed Cadness's only female friend? Like, damn! Uh, the website Novel Updates is the best one for finding new ones. John May. Let me pull out this one. Let's see. I want to see John May. Gotta save this for later. Yes, I really, really want to start. Like, one thing that I really want. Yes! Oh my gosh, yes. This one is so popular, the Don May. I literally see it on Tumblr all the time, but I have no idea what is going on. I know it got adapted into an animation, and the Chinese Communist Party literally banned it, because they were like, 
I think right now they're on a trend of trying to, according to, according to them, they're trying to re-masculinize men. So historical dramas are out. Don May is out. I don't know what to tell y'all. I don't know what to tell y'all. Yes, the official title is called Heaven's Official Blessing. Like this kind of stuff is right up in my lead because I love fantasy and then I love historical fantasy. Yes, Heaven's Official Blessing. Yes, I've seen it. Like I've seen it around so much. Like it's everywhere. Don May and Bahi are a reason to live. The censorship is crazy. It is from China. And right now, like, literally, they try to ban K-pop in China because they said, so right now, China's having a lot of East Asian countries. And even America is, like, having a gigantic decrease in population. So they really think that banning K-pop, banning historical dramas is somehow going to increase the birth rate. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know how, but they definitely said they trying their best. They trying their best. But that... Guys, because a lot of the Chinese dramas I watch would be so much better if they were just like girl love, girl love dramas instead. But no, a Tian Gua Shifu. Let's see. I love how y'all stay giving me Rex. I really love that for me. Let's see. Tian. Oh, it's the first thing that popped up. Oh, okay, okay. So you can get it off Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I'll probably check my local library. My local library is pretty pretty good with stuff like this. I love how it's overall is still in the Heaven's Official Blessing universe, though. Let's see. I'm going to be... Let's see. I'm going to upload these Sims onto the gallery for anybody who wants to download these sims to play with because even though my game is broken someone should have the ability to still play with my sims even if it's not me let's see and also um comments if you guys need any specific cc i'm not a gatekeeper if i can give it to y'all y'all know how i am i'll definitely let y'all have it let's see K John, if you ever figure out what's causing your game to crash, please let me know. I've tried deleting the cache file. To be honest, I I need a divine miracle for my game to not be broken. I'm probably gonna have to spend a week, two weeks, with how much CC I have trying to figure out what's breaking my game. Let's see, Stephanie. I'm just giving these sims, like, random names. You guys can change them. I'm not, like, weird about that stuff. Let's see. Let's see. I'm just trying to make sure y'all, before something happens, because, you know, sometimes when I play for too long, my game is like, okay, screen time. Screen time alert. I want to make sure, I want to make sure the progress is saved. So, Abi says, I also recommend the grandmother of, ooh, Demonic Cultivation, Thousand Autumns. Didn't we agree to be arch rivals? Let's see. I love Demonic Cultivation. It's always the best. The grandmother. And I, I just love how the titles are always, <laughs> always the most long and, like, damn. Like, for the manhwa community, it'll be like, I got reincarnated as the Seven Prince's little sister. I, I, I really love that name and convention. I really love that name and convention. It really, it, it kind of tickles me. Let's see, let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay, so these are the sims that I was able to make. Oh, Awi says, a few also have animated adapters and dramas. I definitely saw that for, which one was it? The Heavenly, Heaven's Official Blessing. 
But let's see, such long and same names. Haha, <laughs> I love it too. They tell you the whole plot. They tell you the whole plot. Let's see, I'm going to... What is it? I'm going to save this to the gallery. And view item details. So my little, I don't know, EA handle thing is pink pastorals for those who want to download the sims and i practically want to say thank you guys to everybody who came i'm definitely going to be doing this way more often now that i figured out how to use Streamyard without my laptop exploding <laughs> and flying away next time i'll come up with a list of things to actually do that way it's not so disjointed but thank you guys so much for coming to the stream it seriously means a lot I'm hoping to upload tomorrow around 8 a.m. because that's when I'm in class. And I want to give y'all something while I'm literally in class for three hours. But thanks again to everybody who came. I really hope you guys have a good day. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.